In this screencast, I'm going to consider computing the tangent plane and normal vector to a surface. And the question I've chosen to illustrate this is the following. You're asked to find the tangent plane in the unit normal vector, and I'll specify here in the outward direction, to the unit sphere at the following point, x equal 1, y and z is equal to 0. You can see that's on the unit sphere. And you're told to use spherical coordinates. And uh, I would say that in general, if you're working with a sphere, uh, you should use spherical coordinates unless you're told not to or unless there's some other good reason not to. As always, even though maybe the question doesn't uh, say to sketch it, I suggest strongly suggest you have a sketch in mind to, to be working with sketch. And I've st already started one here. I want to go ahead and draw. I didn't draw the coordinate axes, and I want to go ahead and do that. So x, y, and z. So let's go ahead and write the parameterization of the surface in uh, spherical coordinates. So you could use u and v, which are kind of our generic two parameters for parameterizing surfaces, but uh, unless you're told to do that, I think it's just better to go ahead and use the, the natural variables, which are the angles and spherical coordinates. So let's just do that. This is just now the, the spherical coordinate. So the radius will be 1. So what would be there is uh, r times sine phi, sorry, making a mess here, cosine theta. I'm not going to keep writing this one here. Co uh, sine phi, sine theta, cosine phi. Just barely made it. All right, so that's the parameterization of the sphere. And then we need our point in question in, in spherical coordinates. And then, oh, I didn't, didn't label it here. That's our point in question. That'll be r of u naught v naught in our generic notation. Or here, r of theta naught phi naught. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and erase those since I don't have room. So theta not, so what is what is theta here? Theta is the angle, this angle, and theta will be equal to zero there. And what is phi? And we recall phi is this angle that comes down. Curve at constant theta. And hopefully you realize that phi there is pi on two, so I'll erase that there and put pi on two. So what we're going to need, we're always going to need uh, to take derivatives of our parameterization. So let's just do that. We're going to need to take dr. Now I'll just tell you, it's it's often better in when working with spherical coordinates to differentiate with respect to phi first. It just the minus signs will be a little bit nicer. So let's just do this quickly. Differentiate with respect to phi. And I'll do the r. And I'll do the r d theta. All right. And in just a moment, we're going to need uh, to take the cross product of those. So I'll leave a little room down here to take the cross product. And let me just say I've lined them up here so that taking the cross product you'll be able to do rather easily. All right, so let's put that aside. So this is then our parameterization. And we've computed the derivatives with respect to the parameterization. You're almost always going to need to do this for almost anything you're going to do concerning surfaces. So let's do, go over here and do the tangent plane. This question doesn't specify in what form the tangent plane should be given. So I'm going to do it both ways. First, I'm going to do the tangent plane as parameterized surface. That means I want to give an actual parameterization very much of the same spirit as this. That is to say, it'll, be, it'll have two parameters, h and k, and it'll be a mapping from these two parameters into r3, and that's represented by this uh, vector function p. It'll be r of theta naught phi naught, that is to say, 0 pi on 2, plus h times um, this vector, dr d phi, evaluated at theta naught phi naught. To save room, I'm now going to erase this. We remember that we have to evaluate it at the point in question, plus k times dr d theta. Again, evaluated at the point in question. This point, of course, we, this is the point x equal 1, y equal z equals 0, plus h times. Now, dr d phi. First of all, before I go plugging in here, let's just see, we should just be able to guess what that is. Well, um, dr, that is to say our parameterization with respect to phi, should be at least proportional to, uh, looks like, minus uh, z hat. All right, let's just see if that's true. dr d phi. Now we're going to plug in here at phi, uh, theta equals 0, phi equal pi on 2. So uh, phi equal pi on 2, that'll give us a 0 here, a 0 here, and a minus 1 there. So in fact, we do get 0. 0 minus 1 plus k, k times dr d theta should be uh, proportional to y hat. 
and we're going to plug in now 0 and pi on 2 into here. In fact, it is 0, 1, 0. And so you could compact this into 1k minus h. That gives me a parameterization of a, of a plane. It says I vary h and k over all reals. All the points uh, in R3 that will be traced out will be a plane. It will be the tangent plane. I want to just draw a piece of it here. And of course it goes to off to infinity. But let me go on now to do, to do the next part, which is to compute the unit normal vector and in the outward direction. All right, and so that will be n will be equal to plus or minus. There will be a, um, there are two possible unit normal vectors to the surface, and we'll have to at the at the end uh, decide which of them will be pointing in the outwards direction. But and they'll be given by the cross product of the derivatives of our parameterization, and that in general won't be of unit length, and so we'll have to divide by the norm of that to get a unit vector. And I haven't stated here, but it's understood that all of the derivatives are evaluated at the point in question, this point here. All right, so we need this cross product. That's the basic thing we need. That's one of the things you very frequently need in working with surfaces. And as I said before, I've lined these derivatives up, the derivatives of my parameterization up in columns so that I can compute the cross product just in place here. And so let's just do it. I won't. Um, well, let me just write it very small here, dr, d phi, dr, d theta is equal to, and so I just imagine there would be an i hat, j hat, k hat here, and um, I go about computing the formally computing the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix with those unit vectors. So let's just, uh, let's just do it. Plus that sine squared phi cosine theta i hat, sine squared phi sine theta j hat, and then Plus here I'll have a cosine phi sine phi. And I'll just tell you, you can you can work this out. You're going to have, when you go this way and this way, you're both times you're going to get a cosine phi sine phi. Then here you're going to have a cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta k hat. And this of course is equal to one. Okay, so this this occurs all the time when you work in spherical coordinates and take this cross product. I just want to evaluate this now. Can I just do it this way? At theta equals zero, phi is equal to pi on two. Well, when theta is equal to zero, this will give me a one. Phi is equal to pi on two, that's a one, so it'll give me an i hat. And then uh, this will give me a zero, so I have zero j hat. This cosine here will give me a zero, so I have zero k hat, so plus zero. So it's simply equal to i hat. So in fact, in this case, that, um, this cross product is already a unit vector, so its norm is 1. So in this case, it turns out to be plus or minus i hat. And since we want the outward direction, we have that the unit vector will just take it. Not necessary to write the plus, but plus i hat. And so that is obvious from here. So I had to take the plus direction because there's two. It's going to point in the i hat direction. Well, that's obvious. If this, this unit sphere here, if you're at that point, the normal vector to the sphere is pointing radially outwards or inwards, and since we want the outwards direction, it'll be pointing this way, and so this then is our unit vector, or n. Um, then the final thing I want to say is that there's a second way to represent the tangent plane, and that is using this normal vector. So you can write an equation that the points on the tangent plane must satisfy, and I think we can all remember what the normal vector is, so let's just go to the next page. So I want to do the tangent again. I'm going to do it as an equation for the tangent plane. All right. And I'm going to take the normal vector, add it into the points on the plane, well, the points on the plane x minus the point in question x naught equals zero. So we know this gives n hat. Well, n hat. Oh, excuse me, n. I call it n hat. Sometimes I put a hat on it. Sometimes not. It's a unit. Vector. In any case, this is a unit vector. Here's i hat dot x, so x will be the vector x, y, z, those are the points on the plane, minus x naught, x naught is the, is the point in question, which is 1, 0, 0, that will be equal to 0, I mean you can do this in steps if you want, is x minus 1, y minus 0, z, but in fact I'm just going to dot it in with i hat, which gives me x minus 1 equals 0. So that is the tangent plane written as an equation in three variables x, y, z. Again, just recall it has to be a linear equation, this is, and, uh, and that's it. 
And of course, this, satis this is the equation for the tangent plane. Here is the tangent plane. It's the plane on which x is equal to 1, and y and z are, not sp are unspecified. They go can be any real values, which again is consistent with the parameterized version of the tangent plane. x is equal to 1, y and z can be any values, as given here by the two parameters, h and k. But that's a pretty standard calculation of um, the tangent plane in two ways. In either are valid representations of the tangent plane. You could do either, let's say, unless you're told. The unit vector, the unit normal vector, is, um, is always done this way. This calculation, it can be messy at times, but uh, it's not too bad. And uh, that's the example.